Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 303, looking at the top 10 cards for Eldritch Moon. Things have been a little bit crazy here personally, so this video is coming out slightly after the release. I try to get these out right before the release or near the pre-release normally, uh, but thank you guys for sticking with me here. This has been a fun set to look at, especially the number of cards that are going to make a splash in Standard or possibly even Modern. Quickly, I'm going to be out at Gen Con next Next week. If you see me out at Gen Con, please say hi. I will be playing in a pretty good amount of vintage while I'm out there and doing some board gaming. I look forward to seeing people out at Gen Con. Let's jump right in here with the honorable mentions. We've got Selfless Spirit, Collected Defiance, and Niari's Wrath here. Red, I want to be really good, but the format is being dominated right now by Collected Company. And these are cards that aren't seeing play because of one or two cards that are being put in those collected company decks and the spirit decks in particular. I'm gonna go into those. I think these are very strong cards. Once we see Collected Company drop out of the environment, they're cards that I would watch very closely. Now, Selfless Spirit could have easily made the top 10, but there's several other cards from those decks that did. This is a very powerful 2142. It's great in decks that are creature heavy, and that's the direction that Magic is going currently, is towards creature heavy decks. In the number 10 spot here, I've got the new Legendary Spider. This made a huge splash in the EDH community. People were thinking that it would be really, really nice to wait a few weeks and then pick it up when it dropped in price. The thing about this card, though, is that it's also a playable control card or mid-range card in Standard. The card has a lot of power when you bring out those three spiders, 3-5 that can block flyers helps with a lot of the angels that are out there and a lot of the spirit decks. Overall, it's going to be a while for this card to drop at all, especially on the foils. If I wanted to play it in EDH, I would just grab a foil now. Long term, this is going to be a fan favorite for EDH, and it's playable in standard. Number nine spot here, I've got the angels, and I've got a whole pronunciation video on how to pronounce these girls. This card design I actually really like a lot. As you guys know, I wasn't a fan of the flip cards. If you're gonna do flip cards, you might as well do really cool things with them, and Wizard seems to be buying into the flip cards pretty heavily here. The design on these cards is nice. The lifelink in particular it's very very helpful for stabilizing the board and it gives you a wonderful win condition in control decks so i would definitely watch both of these cards especially the mythic the broken blade there is really the choke point for people who want to play decks with both of them i kind of wish they'd both been at the same rarity preferably rare but having one of them at mythic makes it much more difficult for people to uh, assemble their voltron here number eight spot here i have a card that is going to be seen in the decks that are control with those angels but it's also going to be a huge favorite in EDH. This is a tutor, five casting costs, that gives you a 4-4 for a striker. It allows you to stabilize the board in control situations and go find the particular legend you need to take control of the game. Very nice design. When I think about tutors, I really don't think about creatures that tutor. Occasionally there's a few in EDH, but this is nice to have a 4-4 first striker and a useful tutor ability together. Collective Brutality. I'm not sure it's seen any play yet, maybe a little bit of sideboard, but we're only a week in to the format. I really like this for dealing with your creature decks that are trying to swarm you, and it has the utility to go after the control decks also in being able to remove instants and sorceries from a player's hand. In my playtesting, I'm often casting this really early, getting rid of my high casting cost stuff to stabilize the board with control decks. 
in both white black and in black blue i see this as a very very powerful control card number six spot here i've got one of the few cards on this list that i don't think has a deck list at all outside of edh bant is not where control is currently but i think long term she's going to be really good and she will always be an edh favorite the ability to protect herself is really nice here and draw three cards you get an emblem with you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their casting cost is just crazy in edh and is a wonderful 90 percent win condition even in a modern or standard deck overall i would wait a few weeks to pick up tamio if she doesn't find a deck she will drop significantly in price but long term especially the foils on her will have some pretty cool value and will be a lot of fun to play in the number five spot here i've got what is probably my personal favorite card in this set not the most powerful but a very very powerful card that you're going to want a four of for the decks that you play it in the wanderer here is a 1-1 flyer that can get some plus ones on it, so it can do a significant amount of damage. You also get to counter instants or sorceries. Both Curse Catcher and Judges Familiar have seen play in Modern and in Standard when they were legal. This is a wonderful rare as opposed to those two being uncommons that is likely to see a lot of play in standard and maybe even some play in modern if we find a good spirits deck for modern the number four spot here i've got the new emmer cool this is a wonderful one of wing condition in a control deck it works really well with the new jace things like hedron archive can allow you to ramp up to it pretty quickly especially when you're discarding cards and drawing cards this is a card that if you're playing a control deck, you're really going to want one as a win condition in it. Number three spot here, I've got the new Liliana. And a lot of people have been comparing Lily to the original Lily, which is really rough because she is one of the best Planeswalkers ever created. But there are some strong similarities. The plus one here allows Lily to protect herself from smaller creatures. The minus two on the original Lily allowed her to protect herself from virtually any creature. In both these cases, you've got very, very strong ultimates that a control deck would be really happy to have. Getting zombies every single turn gives you a way to win the game. The original Lily was a powerhouse in Standard and still is a powerhouse in Modern. The new Lily, I don't think it's playable in Modern, but will be a part of control decks in Standard. I like her a lot. I would definitely pick her up if you want to play Standard Control. Spell Queller. This might be the most broken card in the set. This card is going to define a lot of what goes on in Standard and will be played in Modern flash flying exile target card with converted mana cost four or less that hits abrupt decay too i mean that is super powerful blue white control two three flying counter spell basically yes it can get lightning bolted out but in standard you don't really have that easy lightning bolt and additionally in modern Often what you need to do is just stay alive another turn or two to lock the game down. This is an ideal target out of collected company decks and is going to be dominating the environment for at least a few months, if not a few years. The number one spot here, I've got the new Thalia. This is the type of card you want in an aggro deck. This is the type of card that shuts down those expensive mana bases and gives you an extra turn or two. Basically, it speeds up your deck while slowing down their deck. I've already seen this played in a Legacy Brew against fetch lands and dual lands. Oh, and that was painful to watch. Fetch land comes into play tapped, untap. Go get a dual land. Dual land comes into play tapped. This is a super punishing card. And in the right aggro deck, especially when backed up with the other Thalia, in case you are dealing with non-creature spells, you have a lot of power in your early hate bears. I am picking up foils of this for long term. Very, very nice card. I'm even trying to brew with it in Vintage. 
don't know if that's going to work. We'll see if the hate bears list works. I'm leaning towards my Planeswalker control for vintage. But either way, the fact that I'm even considering this in older formats shows that it's a very, very powerful card. Very, very useful in aggro fair decks. For more research and insight into Magic the Gathering, become a subscriber to the channel. And to help us produce really cool stuff more often, become a patron of the channel. Thank you to everybody out there who currently supports the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Our next pack openings are on August 10th, right after I get back from Gen Con. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.